Regulation of glomerular filtration and renal blood flow. We will first enumerate the factors that regulate glomerular filtration rate and renal blood flow, and then we will explain the physiological control of glomerular filtration and renal blood flow. So we have three important factors that regulate the glomerular filtration and renal blood flow. These include the hormonal factor, nervous factor, and autoregulatory mechanisms. We will discuss them one by one. So first of all, the nervous factors. As we have also previously discussed that the very important nervous factor is sympathetic stimulation. Okay, remember that uh, under normal physiological conditions, the stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system does not actually affect that much the glomerular filtration and renal blood flow because it is compensated by the autoregulatory mechanisms. But under conditions like fight and flight response, this sympathetic stimulation is important in regulating renal blood flow and GFR. What actually happens that whenever sympathetic stimul whenever sympathetic system is activated, it is actually constricting the afferent and efferent arteriole, mainly the afferent arteriole. And when this happens, the renal blood flow decreases. That actually leads to decrease in glomerular hydrostatic pressure. And whenever the pressure over here decreases, it is actually going to decrease GFR. Okay, so that's about the nervous control. What happens in hormonal control? There are various hormones and autocoids that are actually regulating renal blood flow and GFR. Okay, so some of these hormones act by constricting the afferent and efferent arteriole again. And what are this, uh, when, what happens that when afferent and efferent arterioles are constricted again, the same thing is going to happen that it decreases the renal blood flow, it decreases the glomerular hydrostatic pressure, and it decreases GFR. So the substances include norepinephrine, it causes constriction in both afferent and efferent arterioles. Then we have epinephrine and endothelin. They're all vasoconstrictor substances. Other hormones that causes vasodilation at the afferent arteriole. Okay, so now what happens is whenever there is vasodilation at the afferent arteriole, it is actually going to increase the renal blood flow. This increase in renal blood flow then increases the glomerular hydrostatic pressure, further increasing the GFR. So the important factors that regulate GFR through this mechanism include endothelial-derived relaxing factor, which is also called nitric oxide, and prostaglandins. Okay, now we have another factor that actually affects mainly on the efferent arteriole, though it also acts on the afferent arteriole, but its effect on the afferent arteriole is actually counteracted by the action of prostaglandins and nitric oxide. So uh, the substance that actually causes vasoconstriction at the efferent arteriole actually leads to development of back pressure that further leads to increase in glomerular hydrostatic pressure. And whenever this pressure increases, it is actually going to increase GFR. So the substance is angiotensin 2. Efferent arteriole is very sensitive to angiotensin 2. And whenever angiotensin 2 is released, it leads to constriction of the efferent arteriole. But it also leads to the constriction of afferent arteriole, but its effect on the afferent arteriole is counteracted by the effect of prostaglandins and nitric oxide. Okay, the third important me mechanism is the autoregulatory mechanism. How we define autoregulation over here? It is actually a feedback mechanism that is intrinsic to the kidney and maintain relatively constant renal blood flow and GFR despite changes in arterial pressure, which means that whenever the arterial pressure is going to increase or decrease, the intrinsic mechanisms within the kidney are going to regulate its own blood flow and glomerular filtration rate. It means that there are factors which are intrinsic to the kidney and they actually control their own blood flow and glomerular filtration rate. Now remember that these autoregulatory auto mechanisms act when the mean arterial pressure changes from 70 to 160 millimeters of mercury. So the two important autoregulatory mechanisms are 
tubuloglomerular feedback mechanism and the second is myogenic autoregulation. We will discuss them one by one. So the first is tubuloglomerular feedback mechanism. The very important structure of the nephron that is involved in tubuloglomerular feedback mechanism is called the juxtaglomerular apparatus. This apparatus is located at the junction of the glomerulus and the Bowman's uh, glomerulus and the distal convoluted tubule. So as you can see over here, this is glomerulus which is formed by the afferent and efferent arteriole. It is located very near to the distal convoluted tubule and it is forming the juxta glomerular apparatus. Uh, for your convenience, I'll just repeat the parts of the nephron. The Bowman's capsule, proximal convoluted tubule, then we have the loop of Henle and over here we have the distal convoluted tubule which then opens into the collecting tubule. So distal convoluted tubule and the glomerulus, mainly the afferent arteriole, it is contributing in forming the juxta glomerular apparatus. What happens if we enlarge this structure, we see that the cells, the smooth muscles of the afferent arteriole are modified into specialized cells which are called as juxta glomerular cells or JG cells. These are the cells which actually release a very important hormone which is called renin. Okay, this is a cross section of distal convoluted tubule. Again, we can see that the epithelium of the distal convoluted tubule has modifi is modified over here into again special cells which are called which uh, this structure this whole structure is actually called macula densa and this is a structure that is very sensitive to the concentration of sodium within the tubules so whenever the concentration of sodium changes within the tubule these cells are going to detect that change and then they will stimulate the jg cells to release renin what happens next we will see that so just remember that this whole structure which is formed mainly by the afferent arteriole and the distal convoluted tubule, this is forming the juxta glomerular apparatus. It includes macula densa and the juxta glomerular cells of the afferent arteriole. Okay. Another thing why this is called as tubuloglomerular feedback mechanism because the tubule is first going to sense change in sodium and then this is going to give signals to the glomerulus then further changes occur so that's why this is called as tubuloglomerular feedback mechanism. So whenever the arterial pressure falls it leads to decrease in glomerular hydrostatic pressure as we all know because of this fall in the glomerular hydrostatic pressure definitely the GFR is going to fall. So whenever uh, glomerular filtration decreases th this actually leads to proximal increase uh, sodium chloride reabsorption in the proximal convoluted tubules. This is very certain that whenever filtration is going to decrease more time is available for the reabsorption of sodium because of decreased flow within the tubules more time is available for the reabsorption of sodium so sodium chloride is going to be reabsorbed into the proximal tubule more and more of the sodium chloride is going to be reabsorbed in the proximal tubules because of this more reabsorption increased reabsorption of sodium chloride in the proximal tubule it leads to decreased levels of sodium chloride till it reaches the distal convoluted tubule because more of the sodium chloride is reabsorbed in the proximal tubules when the fluid reaches the distal tubule till the macula densa it has less concentration of sodium chloride so macula densa is actually going to sense this, this decreased concentration of sodium inside that the, inside it and further what it leads to it actually then stimulates the juxta glomerular cells to release renin so now the renin concentration increases this leads to the formation of angiotensin 2 and 
this angiotensin 2 is as we have discussed that it actually increases the efferent arteriolar resistance and whenever the efferent arteriolar resistance increases it it increases the glomerular hydrostatic pressure back towards normal so this is the first change that is taking place now what is the second change when the macula densa senses that there is decreased sodium chloride concentration what happens over here that again in the distal convoluted tubule sodium and chloride is reabsorbed and reabsorption of sodium is an active process so when less sodium is there then less energy is required to reabsorb that sodium when less energy is required to reabsorb sodium there will be less hydrolysis of atp that's mean that less atp will be hydrolyzed and there will be decreased levels of adenosine adenosine is a product of atp hydrolysis so when this adenosine decreases it leads to decreased calcium release from the macula densa cells so when there is decreased calcium release as you all know that calcium is required for the contraction of smooth muscles so when there is decreased levels of calcium decreased calcium release from the macula densa it is going to cause afferent arteriolar vasodilation means that the less calcium is there for the contraction of smooth muscles the smooth muscles are going to relax leading to relaxation of the smooth muscles of afferent arterioles leading to its vasodilatation so there is actually decrease afferent arteriolar resistance again when the afferent arterioles dilate they are going to increase the glomerular hydrostatic pressure back towards normal so both these changes are actually ultimately leading to regulate the glomerular hydrostatic pressure and ultimately regulate the GFR so this mechanism is called as tubulo glomerular feedback mechanism because the tubules are going to sense the sodium changes in sodium chloride and then they're going to give feedback to the glomerulus often in efferent arterioles to regulate again the GFR so this is the tubulo glomerular feedback mechanism second important autoregulatory mechanism is called the myogenic auto in myogenic autoregulation what happens that whenever there is increase in arterial pressure it leads to increased pressure at the afferent arteriole that increased pressure leads to stretch of the arteriolar wall and this stretch of the arterial wall leads to stimulation of the myogenic stretch receptors which are located on the smooth muscles okay the stimulation of myogenic stretch receptors leads to opening up of voltage gated calcium channels and whenever the calcium channels open there is influx of calcium within the vascular smooth muscles and the vascular smooth muscles are now going to contract leading to vasoconstriction of the afferent arteriole so whenever there is vasoconstriction of afferent arteriole it leads to decreased blood flow and decreased glomerular hydrostatic pressure de further decreasing or regulating the change in GFR thus the initial rise in arterial pressure because of the initial rise in arterial pressure what happens that the kidneys are activating its intrinsic mechanism to regulate the renal blood flow and further changes in GFR so let's summarize what we have discussed up till now we have discussed the nervous regulation of glomerular filtration in this we have seen the sympathetic the role of the sympathetic nervous system that actually decreases the GFR then we discussed the hormonal and autocoids okay so in hormonal and autocoids norepinephrine decreases GFR epinephrine decreases GFR endothelin decreases GFR prostaglandins nitric oxide and angiotensin 2 increases GFR in autoregulatory mechanisms we have discussed the tubuloglomerular feedback mechanism and the myogenic autoregulation both of them are important in maintaining GFR whenever there is there is change in arterial pressure thank you